this is Piper J. Drake and this is the first video I am trying to record to share how I cook a particular meal. In this case, I'm going to go for putting together a plate of loco moco, which is a Hawaiian kind of local dish created there. And uh, it's a dish that I ate way more times than most people would think is advisable. The couple of times that I've been to Hawaii, uh, I've been both to Oahu and Maui, as well as the Big Island, and um, local local is one of my favorite things to eat. Every place you went had a different spin on how they make it, so I'm putting it together, and um, my partner Matthew is actually really excited that I'm doing this video because that means he gets to eat local moko tonight. Uh, so here we go. We're starting with rice today because that takes the longest to cook. Uh, so I'm starting this about an hour in advance or what have you or sometimes I'll even start it the night before just to have it in the rice cooker hot and warm and convenient for us. The rice I'm using today is Japanese sushi rice. We measure this with the cup that comes with our rice cooker. This is not the same as a US measuring cup. A little over three quarters of a cup, give or take. So I'm gonna try to do this here for video. This is the pot for our rice cooker. I'm gonna make about two cups. Um, for two cups, I try to rinse it out two or three times until the water runs somewhat more clear than the first time. Now there are some people who say that you should rinse until the water comes clear, but I think that that's a little overkill. And I think that you kind of lose a lot of the beneficial aspects of the rice if you over rinse it or over wash it. So that was three times. And then if you see on the inside of the pot here, I have markings and I'm gonna go for the sushi rice marking up to the second hash mark. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, for my high school chemistry teachers, I do remember about looking at the bottom of the meniscus and all that fun stuff. Uh, although with rice, depending on how old it is or how dry your rice tends to run, and it varies from bag to bag regardless of brand, you'll find that you might want to go a little over or a little under the line to get the rice at the consistency that you want. Um, it just varies from bag to bag and, um, you know, give or take. Next up is the rice cooker. Go ahead and set this in here and it's legitimately very easy. Let's close the top, use the menu to select our setting. In this case, we're selecting the white sushi menu. So it's default and I go ahead and hit the start button. I have 80% lean ground beef here to get us started with the actual beef patties. I'm not gonna be super exact about this. I could get out my little scale and weigh it, but mostly I'm just gonna uh, divide this into four pieces that look reasonably close to equal. I'm gonna try not to handle the meat too, too much because uh, I don't want it to get too mushy. I'm trying not to overhandle it, but I'm also trying to shape it into a pretty nice patty. Clean hands, obviously, clean bowl. I'm gonna wash my hands and stop recording after I finish washing my hands, and then we're gonna move to the stove. It's getting real, real hot here. You can see it's starting to shimmer. And I'm going to go ahead and take those meat patties that I sh just shaped a minute ago. I was not gonna salt or pepper them while I was shaping the meat. But now, because they're just about to go in, I'm gonna season the side that's gonna go down. And then I'm going to season the upside when it comes up. It looks really cool in videos. I don't know. But I'm using kosher salt to salt my patties. So you're gonna see me go whoop, 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 whoop. I've also got fresh ground black pepper. I'm gonna be kind of generous with this because I like a good hit of black pepper in this kind of dish. And there's gonna be, remember these burgers are gonna be served over rice. You can kind of see the rising thing and I'm gonna place these burgers all in the pan. I do not do that really pretty swoopy spray of salt 
that you see in a lot of videos because that's a lot of salt when I try to do it. We also have this really cool grinder for pepper and we have one for salt too. And Matthew loves to use this, but I find because my hands are, um, you know, depending on the pain day, whether it's high pain or low pain, this just gets really hard for me to push down. So I actually use a mortar and pestle to grind my black pepper when I'm going to use it for a dish. And this mortar is actually one that was shaped um, and carved out of stone in Thailand and my dad actually packed it. Oh, actually it's got kind of a nice brown to it. We'll flip. I was going to set aside one of these burgers for Matthew so that it was a little fresher cooked for him. Biggest, well, bloodiest one for Matthew. And I'll finish this one off later tonight. Okay, I'm going to evacuate these burgers to a dish with paper towel on it to let some of the oil evaporate or evacuate, whatever drain off and I'm gonna put in roughly probably way more than two tablespoons of flour and I'm starting to actually I'm probably gonna use brown that flour all right I'm going to add some beef broth to this situation I'm using the word situation a lot in this video. Whee! Oh, I better turn on the vent. Quickly stir. Now we're gonna add some more hot water. And at this point, I can start to season my gravy with whatever I think will taste good in it. I am gonna hit it with a little bit of soy sauce. Oh. And I'm not gonna hit it with salt because soy sauce has salt in it, so that's already there. I'm gonna give it a little bit more black pepper because I wanted to have a peppery hit at the back end of this taste. Because I wrote it into the book, this is a dish that is featured in Forever Strong. Kalea makes it. Um, and there's a really strong sense of home around the serving of this dish and for Yingyue as she's you know, interacting with Pua especially, but the rest of the search and protect team. A little bit more water since this is thickening. Another really nifty tool I have because my hands, again, high pain day, I can't open bottles as much. So this kind of gripper thing gives me a little bit more leverage to be able to bo open bottles that I wouldn't have been able to open before. Like that one. So right at the very end, what I do for my gravy is just when I think it's about right, I take it to just a tiny bit waterier than I intend for it for serving because it's going to sit for a minute, right, before I plate it up. And what the butter does is it gives it like a really silky smooth finish to your gravy. And that's my gravy. I'm going to take this to the side, I'm going to get a new pan, and I'm going to make up my eggs for my loco moco. I'm not going to put the pan on high because I don't want the eggs to have to cook too, too quickly. And we're all in. Okay, I'm using large eggs here. Literally what I do is just Leave it at a medium to low heat and let it set on its own. All right, I have plated my dish with some fresh made rice. Um, you can see how nice and separate each of the kernels are, but if you pick it up, sushi rice tends to stick together. It's a little sticky. Let us plate up this situation. We have our burger going for the gravy. Okay, here we go. 
Locomoco hyper style. Look at that. bit more this and that my friends is a perfect bite my partner Matt says that no video is satisfying enough at the end unless you get to see someone actually taking the bite and it has to be a human he says it's not fair if a puppy gets it this perfect bite no Puppy, you get none.